Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 4, Episode 2, titled Amen, Send Money. See, I put the ladder in there, writers. I did it for you. You put the dot, dot, dot. I read it as dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> it originally premiered on, on October 2nd, 1987. It is written by John Schulian. Schulian? <laughs> I'm hoping I'm getting that right because he also wrote down for the count part one and two. Oh, okay. So he's got some right. We got to get oh, him. Don't some worry. The name will get better as we go along. <laughs> So <laughs> he also wrote two teleplays in season three. He's got another episode coming. Very seasoned Dick Wolf vice writer. The director is James Quinn. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I might explain a lot of things in this episode. He also directed Lend Me an Ear and Viking Bikers from Hell. That explains a lot. Oh, yeah. OK, I, 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 I understand a lot more now. <laughs> Both episodes that cover very strange topics in a weird way. And have terrible endings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very yes. Uh, clumsy endings. And so I add this one to the list of clumsy endings. Are we sure this guy's not actually like a fake name like the last one? <laughs> Every time one bad one comes up, they got to bury it on some poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> Alien. Uh-huh. <laughs> so let's go break down this episode. And let's see how it fares by the end, because I have a strong opinion about this by the time we get to the end of this episode. Let's go talk about this. I one. just have one question at the end. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, John, I'm actually excited because we All got right. new artists, people we haven't heard of before. Yeah, we've actually got some new music for once, some new artists. And, and, you know, I, probably my favorite part, no connections to anything <laughs> uh, in the past music it's completely new so let's learn something so let's uh, we're going to talk about these in backwards as far as the order they were played in the episode uh i'm going to talk about rank and files black book first rank and file it is a punk rock formed in 1981 in austin texas by chip and tony kinman this is taken directly from the biography so this isn't my opinion. <laughs> Let's make that they clear. Took, they took the rawness of punk aesthetic and applied it to with ambience of country western and created the subgenre called cowpunk. <laughs> yes, people, cowpunk is a thing. They released three studio albums before breaking up in 1987. In 1981, Chip and Tony. Uh, Kinman split up their influential political punk band once again taken from the biography I'm not saying it was influential influential they're saying it was influential <laughs> their influential political punk band the Dills and they left Carlsbad California in the dust they went to New York City but after after just a few months in New York City they somehow ended up in Austin, Texas. Once in Austin, Texas, they joined forces with Alejandro Escaveta of the Nuns to form the band Rank and File. Chip Kinsman would later recall that people were grossed out their music. They would go into <laughs> new wave clubs and play country, and they would never be asked back. So after their L punk days didn't didn't work out to big success, they would try a synth pop band called Blackbird, and then the Kinsman brothers would eventually return to the cowpunk genre with the band Cowboy Nation. They would release their debut album in ninety seven. Hey, if uh, you're going to Escav- make cowpunk music, you have to do it where the cows are. So, of course, you end up in Texas. Oh, no. Oh, by the way, Cowboy Nation, new cowpunk band. Well, in 97, new debut on an Australian uh, record label. Australia makes music. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, they like cowpunk. <laughs> Escavada would form a band called the True Believers before going solo. Believe it or not, Alejandro Escavada would actually go on to be a, a much more accomplished 
accomplished artists. But that doesn't stop Chip and Tony Kinsman from touring and, and making music. They took a, well, Chip took a big break. And then last thing I saw was that he had started a new band in a similar genre with, I think, his his kid. Or either his kid or someone else's kid. That brings us to the song Satellite by the Hooters. The Hooters are American, an American rock band from Philadelphia. They are a combination of elements of rock, reggae, ska, and folk music. That's an interesting the Hooter- mix. It's a pretty random mix. We've got some, we definitely got some interesting bands here. The Hooters apparently were, got pretty heavy, heavy radio play in the mid eighties and actually got pretty good MTV rotation out of it too. Their most notable songs are all zombies day by day. And where do the children go? The Hooters were formed by Rob Hinman and Eric Bazilian in 1980. Rob and Eric actually met in 71 at the University of Pennsylvania, where they formed a band called Baby Grand and released two albums on Art Artiste Records. They would form the Hooters in 1980, and they would take a one-year break in 1982 after a Who Farewell tour that they opened with Santana and The Clash. And essentially, only the drummer would return to the band. The drummer, David Yusikinen, was retained from the original lineman, uh, lineup. John Kuzman and Bobby Woods had already joined the band youth group, and so they would be replaced with John Lilly, and Rob Miller from another local Philadelphia band called Robert Hazard and the Heroes. In 83, they would finally release their debut album, Amore. And in that same year, Rob and Eric would be asked to write, arrange, and perform on the debut album of this very unknown artist named Cindy Lauper. Ah, interesting. Yeah, they wrote, arranged, and performed on her album, So Unusual. Hinman actually co-wrote the hit song, Time After Time, and actually sang the lower harmony vocal in the chorus. In 1984, the Hooters would be signed to their first major record contract, but just before experiencing some mainstream success, Bassist Robert Miller would be seriously injured in an auto accident and would have to be replaced by Andy King. What happened to Robert Miller after that? It's unknown, apparently, as I was not (laughs) able to find much. It must have been a serious accident. Never came back. (laughs) Just launched him into space. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay, guys. We got Andy King. (laughs) So 1985's... uh, Nervous Night would be released and go platinum, selling 2 million copies. Also in 85, they would open Live Aid in Philadelphia. Uh, They would continue the success all the way through to the end of the 80s. And actually, this specific song that they did for Vice had a, a pretty famous video for it. The video for Satellites features a couple resembling the American Gothic painting and a young girl that plays what I'm assuming was her daughter. And the two are watching a Three Stooges episode and... It's mixed in with the Hooters trying to perform, but they're continually interrupted. So, and it's actually believed to conceal parodies of televangelist Jerry Falwell, Tammy Faye Baker, and Oral Roberts. Yeah, that can't be a coincidence, right? I don't know. You know, a song from the late 80s in this episode. But I don't know. It just seems kind of on the nose. <laughs> uh-huh. A little on the nose. So, between 90 and 95, their popularity in the U.S. waned, but abroad, they were reaching new heights. So, essentially, beginning of the 90s, people stopped caring about them in the U.S., but they were huge in Germany. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, another one of those bands, like when they were huge in Brazil, Portugal. (laughs) Yes, yes. So, and actually, following a London show in 1988, they had met Roger Waters. That would eventually lead to, in 1990, being included in Pink Floyd's staging of the Wall concert in Berlin. Bam. They would also record a live album called The Hooters Live in 93 that would be released in Europe and in Asia, but never released in the U.S. Yeah, we our popularity so waned over there, 19- assholes. You don't get nothing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you want a live album? Go to Asia. <laughs> from 95 to, oh, to 2001 uh, the members basically kept busy with other projects Eric Bazilian in 95 wrote and arranged Joan Osborne's debut album 
which was nominated for six Grammys, including Song of the Year, One of Us, which Bazillion wrote. He would also release two solo albums himself. Hyman would open his own Philly-based record studio called Elm Street Studios. He would actually write, arrange, and produce many artists, the most notably being also Joan Osborne, and this little-known artist named Ricky Martin. Yeah, who's that guy? It sounds so familiar. Like he was just some <laughs> boy band. Can't put my finger on it. <laughs> like a soup? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's made after some food or something. I don't remember. Ah, yeah, it's that, it's that <laughs> hangover soup. Menudo. menudo. Yeah, menudo. That's what it is. <laughs> menudo. <laughs> Drummer David Use, Usikinen, he would move to San Diego, open his own record label, and he would also play drums for several pretty big artists, including Cyndi Lauper, uh, Rod Stewart, and Alice Cooper. And in 1999, he would join a tech group who created an online musical portal called mp3.com mm. mp3.com would be a place for independent and lesser known artists to be able to share music on the internet with people for free it would also be one of the beginning sites basically digital music and at some point a company called cnet would buy the name but the name only guitarist john lil bless his heart so here we have Bazillion working on Joan Osborne's album. We have Hidden producing Ricky Martin. He's even got the drummer being all techy and starting his own website. Taurus John Lilly would open a Philly based landscape business called Avante <laughs> Gardeners. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's where this would go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so John Lilly's a landscaper. <laughs> Just so, saying, John, you might have a place to go work uh, if you move to Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So John Lilly, if you, if you have a job opening, I have a resume for you. So... <laughs> Uh, in November 2001, their first show together since the 95 hiatus, which w would lead to multiple reunion tours and eventually in 2007, their first album of new material since their 93 live album called Time Stance, which apparently they are still promoting and they even re-recorded the songs uh, for an acoustic album. So we got Ricky Martin, we got Cindy Lauper. And we've got John Lee, the landscaper. I think we got plenty. <laughs> exactly. So, and there's your music. Well, like always, John, it always takes a turn that I'm not prepared for. Although I'm excited for you and your job opportunities in Philadelphia. <laughs> uh huh. I do like cheese sticks. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, heat at gmail.com. Be sure to check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash heat. If you want to support your fellow indie podcasters, go check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash heat. we got a ton of rewards. Be sure to check that out. Like I said, email us, heat at gmail.com. You can get us on Twitter, twitter.com slash heat, facebook.com slash heat. You know the drill. Anywhere you see Go With The Heat, that's probably us. You want to get the show in different ways? YouTube, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Music Podcasts. I don't know. Keep asking for it on those little smart speakers you got in your house. See if they'll show up there. I'm working hard on it. I swear. I swear I'm working on it. I'm getting tech advice from Stan Switek, so we're not getting anywhere <laughs> fast. <laughs> But uh, working on it. <laughs> Please contact us and let us know what you think about this episode. Be sure to check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe, all the notes from the show, including embedded videos of the music from every single episode. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals. <laughs>